Hey everyone, uh, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Pinterest, Twitter, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, tonight I'm going to be talking about my most recent concert, which happened um, this last week. It was a first grade concert, but I think you could probably do um, this type of a concert with any primary grade and level it up or down depending on what you want to do. I'll talk about all the songs that I did and how I sort of um, strung them together in just a minute. Um, but first, in, in case you hear me talk about a song or resource or something you're interested in, for example, if you want to get a, um, a link to one of the songs or, or get more information, all of the things that I talk about in these um, uh, videos, podcasts are all linked on my blog, makemomentsmatter.org. You can go uh, straight there and click the video tab or wherever you're watching or listening to this video, there should be a direct link to that. If you hear some sneezing in the background, that is Lucy, my basset hound. She's decided to join me for, well, maybe she's headed out. I don't know. <laughs> she doesn't want to be a part of this. I'm not sure. But she's uh, in the background on her pillow lounging. You may also hear the neighbor kids down the street screaming because that's, it's a nice day. So... <laughs> Anyway, uh, in case you hear some weird things, that's what it is. Okay, um, one more uh, thing I want to talk about before I jump into content today. Um, I am part of a giveaway this month. Um, it's actually happening right now. It's on Instagram only. So if you are an Instagram person, come to my Instagram page, uh, Make Moments Matter Music Ed, and join in. I'm joining with the Crafter Teacher, with Sing, Play, Create, with the Bulletin Board Lady, and with Bear Paw Creek, which if you don't know Bear Paw Creek, you might actually know that. You might have something there, but maybe you don't realize it's from them. They're um, a company that makes uh, movement props. They make scarves. They make these really cool stretchy bands, like not just like stretchy bands, but like unique ones. Um, this this cool one called a connect a stretchy band where you can make your stretchy band bigger or smaller. Um, they make some really great, wonderful accessories. Um, but we're all teaming up to do a giveaway and there are um, just a, t a ton of things included, including a lot of great um, a, a digital stuff, uh, which is like over worth is like worth over 350 bucks. Plus also a bunch of really cool, like physical things, including um, let me just list off a couple, uh, a connect a stretchy band, a set, a set of sh scarves, um, a rainbow balloon ball, um, hoop streamers. Those are all the physical things. And there's a ton of really cool digital stuff too. So if you're interested, you can go to my Instagram page, make moments matter music ed and, um, be a part uh, of the giveaway, join in the giveaway that ends this Wednesday. So you need to go sign up now if you want to do that. Okay, so um, concert. Let's talk about concert. So this was my first grade concert, and um, one of my thoughts about concerts is I want to have concerts. I want it to be memorable and fun and exciting. I want audience participation. I want parents to leave smiling. I want kids to leave smiling. I want to have um, really great musical content, I, and I don't want to uh, spend a lot of time practicing just for a concert, meaning like I don't want to teach stuff that is only for a concert that goes away, that doesn't really have musical value. I want everything that I'm going to do for the concert to be valuable and worthwhile for the kids um, in that year. That's a lot of, that's that's a tall order, right? Like that's a lot of things to try and do in one um, event. And so um, it's, I've gotten much better at that over the years. And um, so I'm just going to share some of what went into um, the planning of the concert and how it all went together. So one of the things that I do uh, for primary concerts, I don't have to have a kindergarten concert. That's my school's policy. We just don't do kindergarten shows, which I am fine with uh, because there's a lot that happens in kindergarten. So to have a full year of just experiencing and trying and like being humans in kindergarten and living together, working together, singing together, that's worthwhile. Um, so I know I'm very lucky in that regard. Um, with first grade though, um, pretty much my concert every year is something based around animals. The last three years, two years ago was, uh, the zoo. Um, last year was the farm. And this year I just called my concert animals gone wild. And, uh, the poster for it was like a tiger, like jumping at the, the person reading the poster. Um, why? Because we teach and learn a lot of songs in kindergarten and first grade that are animal specific, that are about animals, that involve animals, that have um, silly animals, cantankerous animals, frustrating animals. There are a lot of so stories and songs about animals. 
Um, and so uh, I can easily craft a concert based around those animal songs, and I can still incorporate songs that I had planned to use in first grade anyway, and just uh, soup them up a little bit and make them um, make a concert out of it. So let me see if I can find like my brainstorming page. So when I when I sat down, yeah, okay. So when I sat down at the beginning of the school year, I pulled out just a piece of blank paper. I wrote first grade concert, first concert, and then um, I started listing out all the songs that I had taught in the previous year or planned to teach this year that at least had some sort of animal theme. Okay, so here's what I came up with. Little Bunny Foo Foo, Farmer Brown Had a Cow, Grizzly Bear, Naughty Kitty Cat, Shoe Turkey, Sweetly Sings the Donkey, Five Little Ducks, um, The Big Corral, Come Back Home My Little Chicks, Bow Wow Wow, like uh, ton tons of songs, right, that were all animal themed. And I sat down and I was like, well, I can't do zoo because I did that very recently i can't do going to the farm because i did that very recently what can i do and so i was like i'm just going to call it animals gone wild and i'm going to focus on songs that have some sort of like animals being annoyed animals being frustrated animals being wild i don't know something like that i'm going to try and figure it out um so but at the beginning of the year i just listed out all the songs that had animal themes or animal characters and i went with that and then through the year as i was teaching those songs i was teaching those songs in the fall some of them i taught in kindergarten and i would bring back and remind them um and then i sort of had to like start narrowing down like which songs do i really think i can do that show a good variety for kids um how can i string them together and um so it was all songs that i was gonna teach anyway there were like one or two songs where maybe i taught them a little bit earlier in the school year instead of teaching them later in the spring because i thought it would work with the theme um but it or or maybe i sub out a song or two here and there in my, the curriculum because i can do this animal version instead and still get to that content that i want to get to um, so that's sort of my thinking of as i'm planning my thinking as i'm planning um, the concert. Um, so here are the songs that I did. Um, the first song, well, okay, and uh, let me back up. So again, so Animals Gone Wild, right? Uh, so that's what I told parents. Um, a couple weeks after the concert, I said, hey, we're going to have this concert. I'm so excited. Um, uh, here's what your kids can wear. And I said, you, your kids can wear anything animal related. If you want to, if you have or want to get an animal costume, you can wear that. Any animal you want, just know our theme is animals gone wild. That could mean a wild animal or an animal that has gone wild. So it can be uh, tigers, elephants, giraffes. It can be a seahorse, a whale, a shark. It can be a, a tame animal that has become wild, a cat, a dog, a llama, whatever. Farm animals, fine. You Whatever you want. Or if your child does not want to wear an actual animal costume or you don't have one, um, look through their clothing and see if you have any sort of clothing that that features animals. So maybe you have a t-shirt that has a tiger on the front. Maybe you have um, a sweater that has a big uh, panda. Maybe you have, I don't know, you know, so look through the kids' clothes. And then I said, if you don't have any of that, um, wear our spirit wear from the school year, which all kids get one t-shirt uh, per year provided by the PTO. Um, and it happens to have our mascot, a cougar. So if nothing else, you can wear that and it'll fit right in. So uh, I, I, uh, my first job teaching and, and several jobs over the last, well, my teaching career, I've been in places where um, Title I schools or uh, areas where there's uh, low socioeconomic status, things like that. And so I've never been a, a, I've never been the teacher who said, here's the costume, you need to go purchase it or you need to buy blah, blah, blah. I have never been that person. And I want to give parents and kids options. So if the kid wants to go all out and buy a giraffe onesie, great. But if the kid is like, uh, I'd rather have, I'd rather just wear uh, my shirt with the dog on the front. Cool. Whatever the kid wants to wear is on theme. Great. I don't care. And if if they end up wearing something else, uh, in in the mix of all the kids, you're might, maybe got, not going to notice. But giving them the choice of if you want to wear a costume, if you want to wear something with an animal picture on it, cool. I even had a girl who wore cheetah print leggings, cheetah print shoes, a cheetah print long sleeve shirt cheetah print like those ear headband things and then she had like a denim dress over it and I asked her mom I was like did you have to buy anything for this she's like no we had all of this and so we just threw it all together so uh animal prints animal pictures whatever I was like that's wear whatever you want so 
um, that's sort of what they came in doing. And um, we started the concert by, I came in from the back of the gym and I said, hello parents, hello parents. I have good news and bad news. The bad news is um, we have just heard a report that there are some very wild animals that have been released around the school. I, I don't know how there was an, a, a, a breakout or something from the animal the zoo or I don't know, but they've been released. Oh no. Luckily I have some trained animal specialists. And so then the first graders all came in wearing their animal costumes. And, um, so I started by saying, well, let me just tell you, uh, we are animal specialists. We are animal trainers. We are great with animals and we are here to take care of this wild animal problem, but we're also here to teach you about how to take care of wild animals. And, um, I know you might think these, uh, are very small animal trainers, but they are professionals. In fact, um, we have, um, a, a history of training animals, and we have a success story. Let, me, let us tell you our success story about an animal that you would not expect to be a tame animal, but in fact is, and it's about um, a gorilla named Matilda, and we'll, do, we'll tell you the story now. And so then we sang the song, um, Matilda the Gorilla, which is like, I had a pet gorilla, her name, it was a Matilda. Matilda liked to sing songs every day, and this is what Matilda the gorilla would say. Oh, ooh, 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 ah, ah, ah. Oh, ooh, 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 ah, ah, ah. Oh, ooh, 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 ah, ah, ah. Oh, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ah. There are four verses to this. We started teaching this early in the school year, and I didn't have them learn all of the verses. Like, when we first did it, I had them sing a chorus, and I sang the verse. And um, over a couple months, they learned the verses, so they were able to sing the whole story. Um, and it's a, a cute little story. So that's the first song, and I have a link to that on the links page in case you want to go and learn more about that. So um, I said, so we started the concert just like that. That was our success story song or where parents got to see, oh, we are professional animal trainers. And then um, I went on and said, okay, so uh, what you need to know if you're going to um, take care of animals is you need to know how to catch the animals, you need to know how to train them, you need to know how to um, uh, look after their needs, but especially you need to know how to take care of them and to know when to feed them and how to do that. And, and we have a story about someone who had an animal that was a very nice animal, but they just did not know what to do to take care of this animal. We'll tell you the story now. And so then we sang the song, Sweetly Sings the Donkey. The whole song is this long. Sweetly sings the donkey at the break of day. If you do not feed him, this is what he'll say. Hee-haw, 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 hee-haw. That's the whole song. David, how are you going to use this in a concert? Well, uh, so I had them sing the song. I was sitting at the piano playing along. Uh, we sang the song, and then, I, and then I turned to the audience and I went, Well, the farmer, unfortunately, did not wake up when his alarm went off, and he didn't hear the donkey. He rolled over and pressed snooze. The donkey was not very happy about that. I'm sitting at the piano. I move up a half step. And then we sing the song again, slightly louder. Again, then um, I say, oh, well, the farmer did wake up. Actually, he must have heard the donkey or maybe finally heard his alarm. But he decided to sit in bed and look at his phone. I don't know, maybe he was texting or playing Wordle. I'm not sure. But the donkey was not very happy. We sang again a little louder. I move up a half step. Every time we redo the story, I move up a half step. I move from C major up to E major. It just slowly moving up. I, I love playing piano, so it was not a big deal for me. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Um, but every time there's another addition to the story. Okay, well, the farmer woke up um, and he got out of bed. But instead of coming to take care of the donkey, he went to the kitchen to have some coffee. Oh, coffee. And the kids are reacting. The donkey was not happy. And the kids are like, you know. But every time they get a little louder. So by the time we're we're at the end point of the song, the donkey's like, hee-haw, hee-haw, and they're like very upset, right? Um, and so then the farmer comes out and feeds the donkey and they like chill out um, and they go back to normal. So this was a lesson where we were able to talk about loud um, and soft and about how you can get louder, how you still don't want to shout, you still want to use a singing voice, but can use a loud singing voice. Um, and it's just a, a simple sort of silly song, but it gave us a chance to talk about changing the character for every, every time. So it was a simple song to add. Then um, we, I turned to the audience and said something like, well, you know, even if you know exactly when to feed the animal, how to take care of it, the food it likes, the places it likes, some animals are just mean. And this next story is about one animal that just, no matter what we did, no matter what we did, he was just, well, a brute. And so then we sang the song called The Big Corral. And it goes, 
That big old brute from the cattle shoot press along to the big corral. Well, we should brand him on the snoot. Press along to the big corral. Press along, cowboy. Press along to the big corral. Yippee yay! Press along, cowboy. Press along to the big corral. Okay, and so then the kids pretending to ride a horse the whole time. Press along, cowboy. It was like hilarious to see. We did an ABA version of that where A was singing. And then on the B section, as I'm vamping on the piano, I said, all right, cowpokes, repeat after me. These important cowboy expressions. I don't know, I'd written down silly things like, howdy, or like, there's a snake in my boot, or who moved my saddle? And I just, like, I said it and they repeated. It was a B section. It was silly and fun. And then we sang again um, the A section for the end. By the way, after each song, I had the kids pose in one pose from the song. So the first one, Matilda the Gorilla, posed like gorillas. The second one, they posed like angry donkeys. Um, the third one, they posed like uh, cow, cow pokes and riding the horse. And then one mid yeehaw. That's what the kids, it was hilarious. Um, and so uh, for every song, we had a pose for them. Then we sang Farmer Brown Had a Cow, which if you don't know, um, I have a link to that on the links page, but it's about a cow who is sick, ate something and is throwing up. But uh, we said, well, we can't understand the cow because all the cow is mooing and we don't, we don't speak cow. And so before that song, I said, well, you know, if, you, if you're gonna take care of animals, you need to know what they, what they, what they want and what they sound like. In fact, um, we are so attuned to animals and, and catching animals um, that what, when you wanna catch an animal, sometimes you need to sound like it and sometimes you need to look like it. That's why all these kids are dressed like animals because if you wanna bring in a wild animal, you gotta look like that animal so the animal feels safe and then you gotta know what they say. Here, kids, let's try. Uh, and, and so I like turned and said, all right, um, I'm gonna give you an animal, you tell me the sound. What does a snake sound like? And they all hissed. Um, what does a duck sound like? They all quacked. I said, what does a sheep sound like? They all uh, bad. Uh, lion, same thing. And then I said, okay, but how about this? How about this? How about a cat? What does a happy cat sound like? Meow. How about a tired cat? Meow. How about a, um, a cat that wants you to stay away? <sighs> okay. And then we said, so you got to know what the cat is saying and, and what it wants. And you can really learn a lot. But sometimes, no matter what the, what the animal does, you just, it's, it's hard to understand. And here's a story about a farmer who really wanted to help, but couldn't figure it out. So the song's about this cow who eats something and gets sick, but then all the animals in the barnyard try and bring it things to make it feel better. So it, when we learned this song in like early January, I taught them the song, it's a cute little song, Farmer Brown had a cow, had a cow, had a cow. She got sick, I don't know how. All she said was moo. Hey, 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 wouldn't you say that would make it go away? Hey, 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 wouldn't you say that's all for today? Like, hey, will help her make her feel better. Well, all the animals in the farm try and bring her things that are gonna make her feel better. And when I teach that in class, um, I teach them about an animal and it brings something and then it brings um, a thing to help uh, the cow. So like um, the duck brings grain to help the cow's brain. Well, it doesn't need grain. Um, the pig brings cheese to help its knees. And so we go through and we, I give a couple examples and then we brainstorm. What are some rhyming words? What's a food you could bring a cow to help a part of the cow's body? And that's hilarious. Um, or a thing you can bring, a pail to help its tail, whatever. So for the concert, we sang the first verse, which was Farmer Brown had a cow, had a cow, had a cow. Then um, each homeroom class got to sing their own verse. So Miss Allison's class sang, her friend the duck brought some grain, brought some grain, brought some grain to see if that would help her brain. All she said was moo. And then the next class, oh, and then ever all the whole, the whole grade joined in. Hey, 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 wouldn't you say that would make it go away? The next verse, Miss Mendez's class, they sang about her friend the pig brought some cheese, brought some cheese, brought some cheese to see if that would help her knees. So we went through and each class got to have their own animal, their own food, and their own uh, thing they're trying to help. And that was kind of cool because then the, kid, the parents got to hear just their kid's class sing. Um, the horse brought fries for the cow's eyes. The uh, sheep brought a snack for the cow's back. And we let the kids kind of, kind of decide. We had a big list because we'd done it in class. It's like, a, what can you rhyme with? And then we chose some favorites. 
And the last part, verse goes, Now you may want to sing some more, sing some more, sing some more, but she can't sing, her throat is sore, because all she said was moo. And then I get a hey, hey, hey one more time. It's a fun song, but it's fun that each class then got to have their own thing and sing as just their group. It meant that it was a little harder to hear them, but it was it was great to be able to hear and, and have an individual verse for each class. Okay, then we sang... Um, about, you know, some animals you, you think are really scary, but are actually nice. And then I said, some animals you think are really nice, but are actually not so nice. And this next story is about an animal who was not so nice. And, and, and he was given some chances to change his behavior, but, well, you'll see what happens. And then we did Little Bunny Foo Foo. If you don't know Little Bunny Foo Foo, you should look it up. It's cute, hilarious. But w one of the things that we worked on as a class, and this was like the, this is like, perennial every year I use for first grade like the first week they come back because it's so easy to learn and it's silly and fun and the kids love it so in the like first week in August this is like the first song we learned but um, it's one that we brought back to, te to tell in the story and so uh, the bunny goes along and bops field mice on the head and the fairy comes down and goes you aren't supposed to do that basically um, and she's like I'll give you three chances so then the next time um, he goes he goes and does it again and the fairy comes down and she's like little bunny foo foo I don't want to I don't want to see. And at the beginning of the school, we talk about how like the fairy is like, I just told you this. Why, you, why did you do it again? And so then he does it again, gets a, you know, loses a chance. And the fairy comes down and is like, I just told you. Why are you doing And then the last time when he runs out of chances, she comes down and she's like, I told you. Why didn't you? So anyway, it's, we talk about how the character changes the, the good fairy, her behavior, because little bunny foo foo doesn't change his behavior. Um, the fairy gets frustrated and more frustrated and more frustrated. And one of the things that maybe is not in the original Little Bunny Foo Foo that I say maybe a little differently is the good fairy goes, Little Bunny Foo Foo, I don't want to see you scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. I'll give you two more chances to change your behavior. Some, some verses just go, I'll give you two more chances. And if you don't, but I always add, I'll give you two more chances to change your behavior. Because I think that's important and kids need to hear that repeated. Um, anyway, so Little Bunny Foo Foo does not get better and he gets turned into a goon, which is like a gross little slimy creature. Okay, so then um, we talk about how once you've trained the animals and taken care of them and you've got them and they're tame, you need to remember to watch them. And if you let them wander off, that's not good because you want to keep them. you got to keep them corralled or in a fence or something. you got to watch over them. And we, t we did the song called Hunt the Cattle, which is, Wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and find the cattle. Wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and find the cows. And so um, the way I teach this when I first teach it is that I'm the frustrated parent and then there's the kid who falls asleep and in my classroom we have this little thing where they like lay down on the floor and they go to sleep and then their version um their, their response to the song is i sing wake up you sleepy heads and go and find the cattle wake up you sleepy heads and go and find the cows and they wake up and go the cows are lost the sun is warm i think i'll wait till they come home now I'll go to sleep. And then they fall asleep. Well, on the stage, um, we did it first where I sang and the kids responded. And I said to the audience, I was like, you better listen carefully because we might need your help. You might be asked to sing along. You're going to be asked to sing along. You might be asked to sing along uh, in this song. So then I say, audience, was that enough? Did you did you get it? We'll, we'll sing it for you again. And then I split the, the class in half and I say, okay, uh, Miss Goodman in his lawyer's class, you get to sing the adult part with me. Miss Allison and Miss Mendez's class, you get to keep singing the kid part. Audience, listen to the kid part. It might be important. So we sing it again. I say, audience, is that enough? And they're like, mm, no. So I say, okay, okay, we'll switch. We'll switch. So then the kids who sang the kid part sing the adult part. The kids who sang the adult part sing the kids part. So we sing it like three times by ourselves, which is good because it's a very short song. And then in the very end, I let the kids on stage take the part of the adult and I let the audience take the part of the kids, and, and which I say to the kids, it's going to be so funny. Your parent is going to be singing the kid part. Oh, my gosh, it's going to be hilarious. So uh, we sing, and the audience sings back, and I sing with them so that they don't feel completely lost. I even say, like, uh, you know, when we get to it, I go, the cows are lost. They sing, the sun is warm. I think I'll wait. And then they sing. And um, it's a super simple, fun song for them to, to join in. 
And then we're at our last song, and I say to parents, I say, okay, well, I hope that you have been listening very carefully about how to take care of animals, how to uh, bring animals in, how to take care of them once they have them, how to keep them, how to listen to what they need, because now you have a final quiz. We are, I'm going to pair up an animal trainer with each parent, and we're going to make sure that you know how to take care of animals. And so... Um, we, we're going to sing Bow Wow Wow, which was, again, a super duper simple song. Um, it's one that my student teacher decided to teach. And I was like, well, I don't know if we could add that in. And then I was like, oh, I know. So what uh, we decided to do was I had, uh, you know, okay, four homeroom teachers. I said, okay, if you have a student who's in Miss uh, Goodman's class, stand up. And Miss Goodman's class kids went out and found them. And then we, we distributed kids to their parents. And I said, okay, parents, the kids are going to teach you the actions and the kids will sing, but you have to know the actions. So the kids, we took, I don't know, maybe a minute. Um, we taught them all the actions to this very, very, very simple song. And then I had the kids sing it and the dance with the parents. It was adorable and fun and so cute. And the, ki the parents loved being able to do the dance with the kids. And then when the song was over, guess what? They already had their kid. So they didn't have to like, you know, all the kids rush out, try and find their parents at once. They were already with their parents. So, um, it meant that they got to sing and dance with them and, and it was very fun. They were already there. Um, so, but, but also I know sometimes at the end of concert, parents are like, but we want to take a big picture on the stage. But through the process of the concert, after every single song, we had the kids pose to take photos. So I hope that dispelled the, like, we want to take a picture thing. Um, and even at the beginning of the concert, I said, okay, before we sing any of our songs, we're going to take a great picture of very proud animal trainers. All right, everyone smile. And we did like the big smile. And then after every song, we did like our silly, like pose like a goat or pose like a whatever, or an upset parent or a little bunny foo-foo. Um, so they got lots and lots of photos. And then at the end, they got to sing with their kid and do a little dance with their kid. Again, none of these songs are songs that I had to like teach, especially for the concert. It's songs that I probably would have taught in the course of the year anyway and maybe like one or two I sort of bumped in a little bit early but it was just so that um, they could um, all come together with the one theme. Um, I'm not a big decorate for the concert person because all of the spaces I use are like communal spaces and like if I tried to put up big postery stuff it would get knocked down torn down uh, maybe accidentally but like would anyway so I've never been a big um, like uh, not have been a big like um, decorate for the concert person, but what I did do was um, I had a bunch of these Zoo Pals plates um, already in my room, and um, I had like collected them over the years for like pictures or just whatever and examples. I thought for a while they stopped making these. I think they still make them, but um, anyway, they're all different ones. So they're like the the farm ones, the cow, the horse. Then there are some jungle ones like. Um, an elephant or okay ladybug is not jungle but they're a uh, donkey they're all different kinds pig so if you know the zoo pals um, this is like a throwback for me and so I thought it'd be hilarious because it's fun brightly code the kids like them but also like all the parents are like oh my god zoo pals okay <laughs> so um how did I decorate I put I put them up on the wall around um the stage area um, in the hallway, I strung some like uh, very, very thin rope sort of stuff and I taped these on. So it was like kind of like bunting. Um, and then I had a spot out in the hallway that was like a take a picture spot. And um, I had these up on the wall with the name of the concert. So Animals Gone Wild. And then um, there were also some that had like popsicle sticks on the back that were like left over from a couple years ago. And so I left those on a table like take a picture so you could hold the zoo pal in front of your face if you wanted. Um, and take a picture with that. But the Zoo Pals were so much fun, and I did track them down um, a link if you want on the links page if you don't know how to get them, because you can't always find them in stores. That's why I thought they had stopped making them, but I found them online, so prime shipping if you want, so they're there. Uh, but anyway, the Zoo Pals were super fun, and this was very easy because I didn't have to print anything or cut anything. I just had to put them up in different places um, and use them around, and it was just a fun extra thing to add into the concert. Okay, so it also, if you think about the songs I use, uh, Matilda the Gorilla, Sweetly Sings the Donkey, Big Old Brute about a bull. It's really a cowboy song. Uh, Farmer Brown, uh, Little Bunny Foo Foo, Hunt the Cattle, and Bow Wow Wow. Really, none of those are like, the animals are so wild. It's about taming a dragon or whatever. No, I mean, except for Matilda the Gorilla, they're all either farm animals or like 
uh, you know, like uh, everyday animals, things that you would find in the forest or whatever. I, I toyed with the idea of using grizzly bear. Um, grizzly bear. Oh, grizzly bear was sleeping in a cave, but that just didn't, it just didn't pan out. I think you could have done that, but there, um, I think I did that last year or, or so. So I was like, mm, I have some other options. So um, honestly, any songs that you're like, these are about an animal or wild animal or a, an animal that can be tamed or whatever, you can, you can make it fit together. I think some of the explanations I gave in between songs helped keep it on theme um, and keep it about uh, taming an animal. So uh, like uh, Farmer Brown had a cow. That could be in a farm program, but when we talk, when we when we focus it and say like, oh, well, you need to know how to take care of an animal and listen to what it needs, then it becomes in this theme of like, we're taming or taking care of animals. Or um, like Big Old Brute. Okay, yeah, that's a cowboy song. That's not really about a wild animal. It's about a mean bull. But um, basically all you're doing is talking about like, oh, you got to take care of it. And sometimes they're not, you got to, you can't take care of them. You got to press on anyway, because you got to keep going because they, you know, you will, we'll, we'll get it in the end or whatever. Um, so all of those are like just animal songs, but we themed them together. And part of that was me just like giving a little narrative between the songs. Um, and part of that was they just sort of flowed together, but um, it's just a way to take the songs that you're already using, not stress out or do any more, but just sort of re-theme them or refocus them um, to make it about the theme you want. I did say I said these things in between the concert. I personally, um, this is my personal philosophy. So if you disagree, uh, we can t chat about it. I don't personally give uh, speaking parts to k any kids younger than third grade. Um, maybe they can do it i feel like it adds so much stress um for the kid for learning their little line also it's had so much stress for me trying to come up with lines for those kids and make sure they're there for the day of the concert or coming up to microphone working with my figuring all that out i already have kids who say oh i have stage fright i'm like where did you learn that word why are you why have you thought, you know, like we're, we're all going to be on, we're just having fun together. So um, that's why I do all the talking if it's second grade or below, because I just want kids to be up there and have fun and feel like they're so good at it. I don't want them to have the added stress of, I need to know when I go speak or I got to go speak. Yes, kids can do it, but why? And also it like triples the length of the concert. So um, it just adds stress for me, adds stress for kids. It lengthens the concert. So it, for me, it's, this is our first concert and I just like, hey, I'm the fun little narrator person bringing us through. Um, and so I, I take over that part. But I know that kids could do that if you wanted. You could give them um, those narrative things if you wanted. But for the sake of everyone's stress, I don't do that unless it's third grade or above. But that's just me. This is my philosophy and that's um, what I do at my school. Okay, if you have questions about the concert or ideas or thoughts or, hey, this song would work really great or um, why not add blah, 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 please put those in the comments for um, this video or comment or wherever you're watching, listening to this um, so that other people can see it and add too. Um, I'm, I posted all the links for all the songs I talked about on the links page. Um, I also post a link for the Zoo Pals if you want those. Um, you can find other versions of these songs. So like... Um, Matilda the Gorilla. I put a link to that, but I, I know that it also shows up in one of Lynn Kleiner's books. Um, same with um, Farmer Brown Had a Cow. I just posted a link to where you can get it um, for free, but I know that it also shows up in a Lynn Kleiner book or in, you know, whatever book. So if you're like, hey, I found it in this book and it has a recording, um, share that as well in case you like really want that. I, I happen to accompany all of these either on piano or ukulele, but I know some people like to have recordings. So if you have... Um, uh, and in on that too. Cool. Um, share that our way. All right. Thanks for coming to week 13 of Musical Mondays. There are only two more. There's next week and then the final week after that. So um, thanks for coming along with me, everyone. I hope that I will see you next week for a Musical Mondays video. Um, have a great week. Bye-bye.